two of the three people who we know were scheming together to do Donald Trump's bidding with Ukraine have been indicted and arrested. Here's the one who did not get arrested today. And here is what Rudy Rudy Giuliani said about his friends getting arrested by the FBI last night. All I can tell you about this arrest is it comes at a very suspicious time. Well, we can tell you a little bit more about the arrest. The two associates of Rudy Giuliani's who have been working with him on Ukraine were arrested for campaign finance violations on indictments brought by prosecutors in the Southern District of New York. The very same prosecutors who got Donald Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, to plead guilty to campaign finance violations that those prosecutors said were done at the direction of Donald Trump in what they called a conspiracy against the United States to win the presidential election. The special agony of this for Donald Trump and Rudy Giuliani is that it turns out the prosecutor who has done the most damage in Trump world was appointed by Donald Trump to be the U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, which was Rudy Giuliani's old job. That's the job that brought Rudy Giuliani to fame in New York City. That's the job Rudy Giuliani used as his platform to run for mayor of New York City. There is no appointment that Donald Trump regrets more tonight than making Jeffrey Berman the U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York. That pains him more than Mad Dog Mattis or Rex Tillerson or John Bolton or Ryan Priebus or any of the other fired members of the Trump administration. Good afternoon. I'm Jeff Berman, United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York. Today, we unseal an indictment charging Lev Parnas, Igor Fruman, and two co-defendants for their alleged participation in schemes to violate the federal campaign finance laws by repeatedly using straw donors and foreign money. Parnas and Fruman were arrested around 6 p.m. last night at Dulles Airport as they were about to board an international flight with one-way tickets. The movie writes itself. They're ready to leave Washington from Dulles Airport with one-way first-class plane tickets in their hands to Frankfurt, Germany. Perhaps knowing that the feds are closing in on them? Perhaps not. Perhaps knowingly fleeing the country? Perhaps not. They're watching the minutes tick down as, according to one eyewitness in The New York Times, they are drinking and eating the free food in the Lufthansa first-class lounge. When the first-class passengers are invited to board the plane before everyone else, they make their way toward the plane when suddenly two plainclothes officers suddenly stop them. One of them says, we need to see your passports. If the FBI had decided to arrest them a little earlier that day at lunch in Washington at the Trump Hotel, Rudy Giuliani, would have been sitting right beside them. As alleged in the indictment, the defendants broke the law to gain political influence while avoiding disclosure of who was actually making the donations and where the money was coming from. They sought political influence not only to advance their own financial interests, but to advance the political interests of at least one foreign official, a Ukrainian government official who sought the dismissal of the U.S. ambassador to Ukraine. The former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Ivanovich, is scheduled to voluntarily testify to the impeachment investigating committees tomorrow in a closed door deposition. But President Trump and the White House counsel and the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, have indicated that they are ready to block all testimony and all documents being handed over to the investigative committees. But there is nothing they can do to stop the U.S. attorney from the Southern District of New York. Protecting the integrity of our elections and protecting our elections from unlawful foreign influence are core functions of our campaign finance laws. And as this office has made clear, we will not hesitate to investigate and prosecute those who engage in criminal conduct that draws into question the integrity of our political process. And I want to add that this investigation is continuing. This investigation is continuing. So if you're someone who spent a lot of time with Parnas and Fruman, like, say, Rudy Giuliani, this might be a good time to start worrying about what the guy who now has your old job is up to. 
It is standard practice at moments like this for the U.S. attorney to thank the investigators who brought the case this far, including FBI investigators. But today, with the FBI under constant attack by the president of the United States, those words of thanks did not sound like this standard round of thank yous you give people at the office. It sounded like a pointed defiance of the president of the United States by the man who the president appointed as his U.S. attorney in the Southern District of New York. I also want to thank our partner in this case and so many of our important cases, uh, the New York office of the FBI, represented to here today. To my left, Bill Sweeney, my good friend, the assistant director in charge of the New York field office. To his left, Mike Driscoll, the special agent in charge of the criminal division, and to his left, uh, George Kazami, the special agent in charge of public corruption at the FBI. And there is some really good news revealed in the indictment of Rudy Giuliani's associates in the specific candidate elections that they criminally tried to influence with their illegal contributions. Their Republican candidates lost. Republican Congressman Pete Session, Sessions lost his reelection campaign in 2018, even though he took the illegal money. In Nevada, they tried to win the governorship for Adam Laxalt, and Republican Adam Laxalt lost. They tried to win the Nevada Attorney General's race for Republican Wesley Carl, Wesley Carl Duncan, and they lost. And last night at Dulles Airport, they lost big time. This afternoon, Donald Trump denied knowing Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman, but ProPublica reported this afternoon that Lev Parnas posted photographs of their dinner at the White House with Donald Trump on Facebook. It's all there. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.